You know, they say a trip to Emerald Coast today keeps the small males away, and around here, we're only after big males. I kind of just wanted to... Oh, you know what? <laughs> I kind of wanted to use the e-collar. I should probably bring it. That might be a good idea. What's going on, bottom boy? Ducks in here, Xander's in here, Air Force is in here. What's going on, guys? By the way, while I was standing here getting the stream set up, a feral pig murdered me, so that was rather kind of it. Uh, let's see, we may have to reconsider our loadout a little bit, because that does take up a lot of space. I don't want to ditch anything per se. I guess the 243 is fine, we can use the recurve to take out like foxes. Now we're ready. Alright, only, uh, only two minutes in. <laughs> Professional stream. What's going on, Brad? Bruce in here as well. What's up, Barrel Heat? Finally able to make a stream. Hopefully it'll be a good one. I'm looking forward to making use of the recurve and that range finding side again. It's typically a pretty good time. Speaking of foxes. Hey, what the heck? Let's try to call that in. Bottom boy, thank you for the 37 months. Welcome back. Big collar energy. As long as it brings in big males. We'll go for any kind of energy we can get. Broncos country, we won? I saw a lot of comments basically being sad that they won. <laughs> Hoping for a tank. Let's make the stream uh, for any color and not use it at all. <laughs> Gonna be doing a lot of spotting and stocking today because we didn't bring the e color. What's up, Angelic? Still don't have a diamond. Uh, is there a particular type of diamond you're looking for? Any diamond at all? What's up, Wyatt? I see you in here as well, Shio. Good to see you. <laughs> Swing is coming in with the 25 months. Welcome back. I really appreciate that professional stream energy. We are true professionals around here, and everybody knows it. So, Rusa Deer? Okay, that's, um... I wish we had some cover. I really hate to just crawl around and wait forever. Like, I'd prefer to get the collar down, but I kind of think if we scoot up to this edge, use the collar, maybe make use of the range-finding site, we can probably get it. I understand the tank, but winning still feels good. I mean, Sean Payton himself has said tanking is bad. Now, this was before he was the Broncos head coach, but... And I totally agree with what he's saying. His whole thing was like, you have to have a culture that breeds winning, not losing. So if you're losing on purpose, that's just never good. Uh, just any diamond was a really easy grind. I would say Ibex on Quattro Kalinas. We came to our Quattro Kalinas a week ago today just to kind of have a little fun, use the 44 a little bit, and we killed two different diamond Ibex. Did we? No. We killed one diamond and one troll Ibex and a diamond red deer in the process. What's up, Wheeler? Do I just... Do I... I just got my first white tail great one, I guess is what that's meant to say. I would be spelling things wrong as well if that's what just happened. Congrats, man. Hope I read that right. I'm pretty sure. You know, I haven't used this yet. Despite that, I used it for something because I remember that sound. Very nice sound. Love to hear it. Uh, how's the IRL deers looking? Well, I definitely feel better going into the rut having some fresh venison in the freezer. This is, or almost was, the second year in a row where I didn't have any deer going into November. Got that doe last Wednesday. Um, bucks are starting to move a little bit. Kyla saw a spike this morning. I should have been out, but... The one stand I wanted to hunt, I have one branch that I gotta cut, and I can't reach it with the pole, so I'm gonna have to climb a ladder, and... I probably need said ladder held, just the way that everything is, the, the way the trees are in there. So eventually when I can get that done, maybe I'll actually have a morning spot. However, movement is definitely happening. I hunted Saturday night and saw a couple of bucks. It's the time of year to be out for sure, and the worst part is the wind... The wind. The temperatures are just... the worst. We got like 75 as the high a couple days this week. It's just terrible. What's up, K-Flow? Hark? What's this? Did we spook that fox? Because I'm kind of thinking where this track is. Probably anything but good. Alright, we're just going to change gears here. There was a rooster deer. It's only marginally less annoying. You're not who we're trying to... That was weird. The way she responded right when we hit that call. What do you want to be the next great one? I still think Mule Deer would be awesome. Um, I have talked at great length about a... How did he get up there? I don't know. Bruce Deer it is. We're not going to go back. 
Um, I still think basically a mule deer blacktail hybrid, also known as a bench leg, could be an awesome great one. And then you just do both species combined. I hear something. I was the... What? <laughs> I don't understand how that happened. It's fine. We're just going to shoot a rooster deer and pretend red fox don't exist. 75, I wish North Dakota was supposed to be... Supposed to get 16 inches of snow this week. Ooh, boy. Somewhere in between would be nice. Like a good... I'd be alright with 30s as the highs, as long as there's not 16 inches of snow. Need a volume on that e-collar? Really, I think that would be a good idea. Just a quality of life kind of thing. I've always been in favor of, like, maybe being able to turn down the shot volume and stuff, too. It's just, it can be a little much. That's a little further than I want to shoot, but I guess we're gonna try? See if it'll turn broadside again. It's gonna be almost 60. Alarmed. Think we got him? We did, and they don't even know anything happened. You can go in audio and turn down? Hold on a minute. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Shout out to EW for being proactive on that one. Give us gunshots next, please. 87 here. Good lord. I mean, if you shoot one at 87, you gotta have it, like, recovered and cooling down really quickly. Oh, speaking of quickly. <laughs> got out of there just in time. God, that's so much better. I can hear myself think we're gonna, we're gonna kill twice as many things just for the mere fact that we can hear. And think. <laughs> I love the Pittsburghies, uh... I was gonna say a dialect, but the way that you spelled it to be obviously Pittsburgh is perfect. Did you see the, um... There was like a compilation of... I don't know what game it was, but one of the refs for a college game was so obviously from Pittsburgh. <laughs> it, was, it was just a compilation of him going, First down! Have to drive six hours north to our hunting lease? Ooh, boy, that's a... that's a haul. The one good thing is, if you're going that far north, it's probably considerably cooler. There's our deer. Harvested a pronghorn two or three weeks ago, and I was in 75 degrees, and even that was warm for the meat. Yeah, I mean, early archery season here, typically that's kind of what we're dealing with. Like, my brother shot one the first night. I'm trying to remember what the weather was that day. It was warmish for sure. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. When we found it... I think it was right after we kind of got to work gutting it. I was pretty much, you know, because my brother shot the deer, I was pretty much just there to hold things and, you know, help, like, hold a leg or whatever while he was processing it. The amount of mosquitoes that were swarming us, I had to put my face mask up and just hide. Like, they were all over the place. It was, it was definitely warm. And if you can, you know, if you can recover the animal quickly, it's not a big deal to shoot one in that kind of weather, but... You gotta, you gotta make a good shot, otherwise that meat can go to waste. What's up, Sue? <laughs> the Packers are brutal? Man, you know, I kind of trusted the Broncos to do something dumb, which they didn't really do anything dumb, it was the Packers getting stupidly lucky, and they still lost. What does the feral pig call sound like? Probably a pig. At least it's not a squeal. That could have gotten annoying, too. Let's see if they'll start to come this way. They're no longer feeding, so I think they will. I'm not even sure where... I saw it somewhere on X Bottom Boy, but where... No clue. Hello from Finland. What's going on, Johan? Does two months out sound right for a dislocated wrist? Depends on what their sport is, I guess. How goes the hunting? It's going. Smoked a rooster deer, had the second one get away. We were trying to call in a fox for 12 years and it somehow snuck in behind us. Broncos didn't do anything dumb. Kareem Jackson, I think he has some time off coming his way. Yeah, that hit was pretty brutal. I mean, I don't know how intentional it was, but it, it looked pretty bad when I saw it. Got a diamond bob got off New England last night. Nice. Where at? Like, north-ish? I'm... The longer I go without getting one, the more I'm beginning to think maybe I'm just hunting the wrong part of the map. What's up, BC Gaming? 
Introduced my brother's friend to Way the Hunter because he wanted a good hunting game, and we spent 30 minutes running stuff over and laughing, ripped all my five stars. So, you know, maybe that's not the way they intended the game to be played, but I can't lie, it is a lot of fun to just screw around with the vehicles. The, the vehicle physics, the flipping around and stuff you can do, it's top tier. Speaking of top tier, 60 meter shots with a recurve, why not? Nick Bolton, two months makes it sound more serious than a dislocated wrist? Are they attacking us? I think they're just kind of dumb. Anyway, uh, I mean, for a linebacker, you, you, I don't know. How do you dislocate a wrist? Like, I don't, I don't know what part you dislocate. Maybe something has to break in order to dislocate it? Like, when I'm, I'm moving my wrist and I don't understand that injury at all. What's up, Hex? The sheer enthusiasm in the wear at? <laughs> Tell me, please. Favorite animal? Uh, in game? See, it depends on the context. Like, if you mean favorite animal to hunt, I say gray wolves. Favorite animal model? There's some good ones on Emerald Coast, but I think still mountain goat and pronghorn are tied for me. The lake furthest top right of the map. Okay, so that, at least I'm not completely dumb. That is a place I check very frequently. Showstopper got me into the way of the hunter. You do the best content. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm hoping to get another Way of the Hunter stream in here, maybe next Monday? Kinda had almost back-to-back -back Way of the Hunter videos this past weekend, which, honestly, that, uh... That hunt we did... Where did we even go? Oh, on Tickamoon. We were stumbling into five-star birds everywhere. That was a, a really nice surprise. I just wanted to go and shoot the, uh, the 9.3 a little bit. Ooh, that sounds awful, Clark. He's a, that's a good player too. I didn't I didn't know anything about that injury. How expensive is Wade Hunter? Um, if you get the I always forget what they call it. The version with like the maps and stuff that comes with it. I think it's sixty bucks. There's a lot of content in that sixty dollar purchase. You're looking at I think it's Ticket Moon Plains isn't a part of that if I remember right. It's four maps. Um, a total of, what would that be, like, 170 square miles or something of land to roam? Whole bunch of species, lots of weapons, like, the base game, that, well, let me not call that the base game. That version that gives you the two maps and stuff, I really do think you get your money's worth. And then you throw on... Ticket Moon Plains, which I guess would be an additional, like, $10 or something. It is a really good map. I don't know... Does, does anybody know if you can play, like, multiplayer maps? On Way the Hunter if you don't own them? I never looked into that. How would you feel about a Scottish Reserve? So, I don't know a whole lot about, like, what species you'd be hunting there, other than Red Deer... Oh my god, hello. Uh, hold up. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, how do I turn this off? I forget how to play the game all of a sudden. Help. I don't want those ones to come in. We're going to go get that one. Is that a gold? It's going to be real close. I wonder if they score top end of their estimate. Oh, now he's... Uh, okay. Don't know why he's doing that. We're just going to run in that way and try to get the caller set up and bring him in. Because they're... Oh, okay, he's back in his zone. Maybe no need to panic. Wind is awful. Okay. Uh, let's sneak down around. I want to be able to keep him as in sight as possible. So we'll go down to the left. And then try to find some cover and set up. Five bolt indeed. And like a pretty nice one. I think gold is like... I don't know why, but I have it in my head that it's 114. is somewhere in that region. He might be a gold piebald, which would be awesome. Any signs of the Bladed Nine still around? So we were watching trail cam cards after the Steeler game yesterday. There's one buck that, weirdly enough, let me think of how it was. I think his right side resembled 
like vintage bladed nine. The uh, almost like banana tines that that curled inwards. The ninth point, obviously, that made him the bladed nine and the bladed main beam. The left side was kind of more like last year bladed nine, more straight tines. No uh, G4, so he's a nine point still. And I, the thing that really got me, he, I wish I had saved that picture. I'll have to get my brother to send it to me. It just had like a dinosaur looking head on it. If you look like at the chest and the stomach, it's like the skin sagging and stuff. It's an old deer and he would be eight and a half. He's considerably smaller than what we were looking at last year for the bladed nine. But at that age, he should be on, you know, kind of the downhill slope. So I think it might be him. I hope it is. At the same time, there's a couple of bigger bucks at my property that I want to hunt, but if that's him and I could confirm that's him, I would chase him all year again this year. Everyone send gold vibes? We're going to need to send some cover vibes here. There's nothing to hide in. Do you want the rifle, IRL, or bow? Uh, both. I've definitely killed more deer on film with a rifle because, well, much more range to it. I don't know if that's 100% true. I killed three my first year, one muzzleloader, one rifle, one bow. Three my second year, all with a bow. Uh, two my third year, one bow with... Yeah, then I killed four last year with a gun. So I think slightly more with a rifle, but it's been fairly balanced over the last five years. The Bladed Grandpa? Yeah, back in my day, I used to be the dominant buck around these parts. Maybe I can call him in like that. Grandpa, pudding's ready. Okay. I'll stop screwing around for 12 seconds and try to kill this five old. Did that work? Okay. Hopefully he comes in. Not gonna be able to see super great. And since we're gonna have a crosswind, I want him at 20. How many tags are you allowed in PA? So it used to be really straightforward. You would get one buck tag. I think it... I want to say... So every doe tag you have to basically apply for in a lottery system, but there's huge quotas, like 50,000 some tags per unit. Statewide has got to be, boy, I would think in the region of a million doe tags, maybe like six, 700,000. Anyway, used to be that you could get one doe tag, one bonus doe tag, and then I think you could get a third bonus tag for a separate unit. Now, because of CWD concerns and trying to keep the population low enough that if CWD would kind of impact the state's deer population, um, it wouldn't be able to sweep through it. Higher numbers of deer, more deer to deer contact, the whole thing. So now you can get up to six doe tags, regardless of unit. And if you fill those tags, you can purchase more. So like I just shot a doe last Wednesday, I could buy another doe tag for that unit if they weren't already sold out, which I think they are. So are they, like, not coming in? Just gonna give it a little bit on the off chance they're just standing around. There's... that's him right there, I think. Deer to deer contact is Flinter's version of the birds and the bees. The birds and the deers. The bigs and the males. You think you'll do a video on managing a whitetail on Way the Hunter? I do want to make a video, like, kind of talking about the best way to manage herds and all that. It's a complicated topic. It seems really straightforward, but there's a bunch of nuance to it, and I do want to make sure that I can, you know, do a fair job of it. This is the better pie ball, in my opinion. Decent time length, up to 128. Man, if he is a gold, this is going to be so darn cool. Birds in the bucks, there you go. Use the new collar? We are using the new collar right now. Oh, okay, we might be looking at 30? Good thing we have the range finding sight. 35. Okay, now he's alert. I think we got him. Cool. Okay, last second I panicked a little bit and moved that just a smidge to the right because of the crosswind. Whether or not we need to see, we got him down. Cow deer? Kind of looks like a cow. Most important part is dead deer. Second most important part. Was he big enough to make gold? I see he's going to be right on the fringe, I think. Please make it. It would be so cool. Just do it. No. <laughs> 110. What did I say it was? 112. Come on. Why can't you be a 12 and like us?
still pretty darn cool. We've shot a couple of rare ruses now. We had a fair bit of strugs trying to get a diamond one. I think we killed maybe two or three pieballs and leucistic. This is our biggest one. So close. Usually the power of 12 does not deny us like that. I feel kind of feel kind of betrayed by 12. The good news is tomorrow's video is going to be Call the Wild as well uh, with the Halloween event for the Hunter Classic starting on Wednesday. Pushing Classics video to Wednesday. I did a little late in trophy cabin hunting and maybe got two of the tougher diamonds to actually acquire, at least in the way that we're hunting. One, in theory, could have been easy, but we did get some diamonds today, so I can't complain. Bad JK, but not really. My feels. Face hurted. Big strugs. What's up, hippie man? What's in the new pack? So, uh, the takedown recurve that we're using, which can have sights attached. As you can see, we have the range finding sight. Any of the bow sights can go on there. You can have the single pin, the three pin, the five pin, and the range finding sight. Also, obviously, the e collar that we used to call that guy in. And in my opinion, most importantly, the Model 1894 is a 44 lever action. That thing is insane. We don't have it today just because we're trying to cover more animal classes. 7 mil does that a little bit better. But the gun itself and the the damage, wow, crock way up here. Um, the damage that 44 does is impressive. Is Classic only on PC? Unfortunately, yes. Um, the game came out all the way back in 2009. Consoles at that stage really weren't equipped to run like a, a game like Classic. Now, any console could run Classic and it's, uh, you know, requirements basically with no problem. Back then it would have been a different thing and porting it to console now would be a pretty big undertaking. Would you use the 44 for red deer grinding? I'm only going to say no because I think you're asking the question like, if you were me, would you use the 44 for red deer grinding? If you if you literally mean that is like, would Flinter use the 44 for red deer grinding? Yes. <laughs> I love it. I don't think it's the best option, but I would use it anyway. <laughs> I don't even know what that was in answer to. Same exact sound for the sandbar. 470 nitro or 7 mil? Always go 7 mil. The 470 is actually not very good. So have I just like not hunted sandbar in a while and that's the regular light color? I guess so. Working and lurking, I appreciate you, Hatchet. Oh, <laughs> I got it, bottom boy. What's up, Cosmic? What do you think of thermal sights coming to Call of the Wild for improved night hunting? Well, considering how borderline, I don't want to say useless, but not good, the uh, night vision scope is, it's just it, the fact that it's one to four power zoom just doesn't give you much. Maybe adding a thermal scope would be a little nicer for that. My concern would be I'm thinking of the games that had it. Deer Hunter 2005 had it. And I think Outdoor Adventures had one. It, it might have been, actually in both cases, I believe they were just for spotting. I think the one in Outdoor Adventures may have been an actual scope. Anyway, what I'm getting at is, when you use that thermal scope, at least in Deer Hunter 2005, it just turned the game into easy mode. I mean, you look through the, you scan through the forests, all you need to look for is that heat signature, and you know when there's a deer there. That would be my concern, like that might make it too easy. Something for improved night hunting I think would be really good, but maybe not thermal specifically. That hit that. Nice antlers coming off, sir. <laughs> they gotta fix that. Gotta fix that. Been like that with Sandbar literally since release, and there's just been nothing done about it. What's the old game that had X ray vision that was severely OP? Ooh, X ray vision. I'm not sure. 
Double long that guy, a little 118 silver. I think we got the first one too. Um, I'm hoping that alert's gonna go through, it should. But Cannon Rocks, thank you for the super chat, I really appreciate the support. If it doesn't go through, we'll uh, we'll try to get it sorted. I tested the alerts before the stream though, and they worked. Ooh, maybe we didn't get that other one. It just died. Oh yeah, we'll find it. Candy corn is just garbage? No. Candy corn is the correct candy. It is. <laughs> Don't listen to Kyla, she's wrong on this one. Why? Uh-huh. No. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> Dangerous hunts in an X-ray scope? Boy, I don't know. The original. I didn't play much of the original. My cousins owned the game. And, uh, you know, gaming back in the good old days. I would only play when I would get to go visit my cousins, so I didn't, didn't see a lot of the original one. I think every Dangerous Hunt's from the original on I owned, but I do not know for sure if the original had an X ray scope. Candy Core? You could put a candy core inside the candy corn. I'd rather be given unpopped popcorn kernels than candy corn. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> uh, how much is the new add-on? I was it three ninety nine or four ninety nine? Do you remember? I don't actually know. It used to always be three ninety nine. I think that's what it is. Do they have that listed anywhere? Uh, four ninety nine. It is. I found the price. Candy corn is fire. I don't care what anyone says. I don't know that I would even go as far as to say like it's fire. I do act as if it's the best candy ever, just to annoy Kyla. But I think it's good. I don't think it's a bad candy. I'm not sure if there is a bad candy. To be fair. No, you're right. I'll give you that. Correct way to eat candy corn. Throw it in the trash and Reese's cup. I mean. Are you going to do the whole rap for us? Could you please? There is for sure bad candy. You're bad candy. I'd rather eat grass. <laughs> I think Snickers are bad. I just had a Snickers this morning. Because you're not you when you're hungry. Licorice is trash. Red licorice is fine. There you go again with the weird... That's an odd sound. Weird, uh... I don't know if that's a level of detail issue or what. They just render almost like T-pose from a distance. That is the regular light brown. Okay. What? Did I aim with the... I must have aimed with the wrong dot. Had to have. Almond Joys are whack. Ironically, I think that... No, is it those? No, it's the ones without the almond. Red wrapper. Just a joy. <laughs> yeah. That's not what they're called. <laughs> those ones are my dad's favorite. I can't think of what they're called. Mounds. Yes, thank you. Why don't you cry for great ones? To be 100% honest, I always, like, generally enjoyed grinding for great ones, like, just the shooting everything type of approach, and eventually I may get back to doing that. The problem is, in my mind, it's been pretty much proved that herd management does work, and I just don't enjoy herd management. I'm not saying that I necessarily think it's bad or that no one should do it or anything like that. Don't take me out of context. If you're herd managing to get your great ones, like, more power to you. I just don't like it. I don't like having to think about, like, if I see a deer and I'm grinding for a great one deer, I want to shoot it, right? I don't want to have to think like, oh, that one's a level one. I've got to leave that one and go to my next zone or something. It's a probably a dumb thing, but it is just, I don't know, not my favorite way to play the game. And the problem is, now that, like I said, it's been pretty much confirmed that that works, it just feels like I'm wasting my time to grind the old way. So I'm kind of stuck in this weird, like, 
don't enjoy it phase where I'd just rather do something else. Butterbeer? I don't know what that is. Do you know what it is? Don't look at me like I'm... <laughs> I've never heard of that. Is that like a southern thing? No. What is it? Stop being... I can't think of the word. Uh, I don't know. Stop being condescending and tell me what it is. Yes. You are, because you're just not answering the question and saying I need culture. It's a creation from the world of Harry Potter. That's a southern thing. No, <laughs> What's up, Timothy? Didn't you grind for the Great One Moose? Yeah, uh, so it was Moose and Fallow Deer that I think at least pretty much proved that herd management does work. And I still grinded for a, a Great One Fallow Deer anyway. But it was going back to Moose and Black Bear. Like, Black Bear really did it. Like I said, I, in my opinion, it was like completely confirmed. Nobody's like nobody from EW has come out and said like, "Hey, herd management gets more great ones." But look at the results. Like Mel basically started herd managing after I think maybe before her first great one, Fallow Deer. Now it's not like the stacking and stuff. She's just like not shooting small ones. Um, but her she was able to get like twelve great ones in a month versus not getting one for the prior several months. Still grinding. That type of result is what convinced me. But anyway, when I started grinding for Black Bear, and I'm only killing like 12 Black Bear an hour, and I start getting level 3s, and it's like, why would I shoot a level 3 if that's going to make my life harder? And then I just kill like 2 per hour, and then I just get bored. So I do this instead. I kind of forgot that we're supposed to be bow hunting because we found Bantang. I wasn't saying it is root beer, I was comparing them. Caramel cream soda. Why do they call it butterbeer? Dream mount to be added. Hmm. So I always wanted like... A black bear sort of over a moose carcass or something like that. Kind of in a similar way to like the, uh, I think it's called Fangs Out. It's three Iberian wolves with a mouflon carcass. Basically that, maybe a bear or two over a moose carcass. Now with the great ones, that could definitely be a cool mount. Other than that, like a bachelor group of mule deer bucks. Huddle mule deer essentially, but give me five. Got a Marlin model 6022 long rifle on Friday. That's pretty cool. Never had a Marlin 22. Uh, did he answer you? I did indeed. My e color was causing major crashes on PS5. That's not good. I cannot say I've had really any issues with the e color so far. Definitely have had plenty of issues with multiplayer disconnecting and stuff. That's still happening, but... I don't think I've crashed once since they came out with that. I think it's, honestly, Clark, like, I think it's just different people enjoy different kinds of playing the game. Like, I can totally understand why someone enjoys herd management and stuff. I just, I get bored of it too fast. Huh. <sighs> ah, God. This is what I get for leaving the 243 at home. Come here, you. Five medium, holy! Do you have a black bear great one? I do not. Killed something like 6,000 black bear. Um, maybe it was 5,000 before they changed their drink time tonight. I've killed less than 1,000 since then. It's just not fun anymore. That thing was speeding. That's not even to say, by the way, that I think it should be a fun grind. It's... I've talked about this with, like... Diamond Axis Deer, Diamond Black Buck, things that used to be really common that now aren't. I feel like they're still not considered special. It's kind of the same but the opposite. 
with the Great One Black Bear thing. When you've experienced hunting a certain way for, gosh, almost a year, I think, and then they change it, and you know what it was like before, it's really hard to just gut it out and play how it is now. For me, anyway. One day, maybe I'll go back to that, too. Like I said, like there may be a time where I can just enjoy the management side of things, but not there yet. I'm so good at this game. <laughs> Jurassicarno, thanks for coming to A.E. Shusty. Welcome, welcome. It's carbine 2, so it has an 18-inch barrel instead of a 22-inch barrel. Plus, it was only 200 bucks. Oh my, that's a good deal. Your guides help me understand the game more. Thank you for the guides. My pleasure. That is my primary goal, really, with any content, is to try to help people understand the game. Is the new e-color any good? So, like, it is, but it doesn't necessarily make the most sense to carry. We're using it today, and it, you know, we called in a piebald rooster deer with it. Flawlessly, called it into 35 meters. Wind was bad, shot it with a bow. Basically, exactly what it's used for. Here's the very simple breakdown of why it doesn't necessarily make much sense to carry. So, when we scroll over this, you see right over here, it takes up five units of capacity. Every other color is a half a unit. So, now we go into our, not like that, we go into our inventory. Let's say we only carry the three weapons that we have right now, and binoculars. So we have three, four, six slots for colors. The issue you come up against, six slots for colors is three units of space. I guess there's a world in which you want to carry more than 10 callers, which the e-caller certainly has the capability to calling more than 10 things. That's about the only place that it makes any sense. Otherwise, you should just carry every individual caller for the map because you use up less of your space. That's kind of where we run into a problem there. Uh, so did that double send, I think? I'm pretty sure we had Kflow gifting that membership to Jurassic Carno. Certainly appreciate it, man. That's what it says to me. Oh, it's backwards. Never mind. I got it. Jurassic, thanks for the get the membership to Kflow. I don't like YouTube system. Twitch makes it very much more clear <laughs> who did what. Thank you, man. Best map to hunt Whitetail. I would say Revan to the Coast at this stage. If you had to give up Mountain Dew, what would you drink instead? Can it be like knockoff Mountain Dew? I'll give you a better... Yeah, that's that seems like cheating. Mm. I mean, like... Probably Pepsi or something like that. I don't love Pepsi, but I don't... It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> Literally makes no difference. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the deal was, but I was sick, like, two or three years ago. It was during COVID, so we decided it was probably better if I just didn't go out and, you know, get groceries or whatever. So my mom was actually, like, buying a couple things that I would need. Back when I lived at my apartment, which was, like, five minutes from the house, she would literally hang them on the doorknob. That way, you know, we didn't have to make contact or anything, and we were good. So she got me, like, a six-pack of Pepsi or something. I was like, well... I guess this is all I have. And I was fine to like record and stream with that. Even though I was sick, I was still rolling. So what I'm saying is, it probably wouldn't matter. I would probably just drink whatever. Too far forward. Just by a touch. Dr. Pepper or Mr. Pib? I thought it was Pib Extra. What's Mr. Pib? This better not be another butterbeer conversation either. Just tell me what it is. <laughs> start being all condescending with me again. I'll end the stream right now. <laughs> Water is goaded. You know, I just... It's too much for my vocal cords to not have something a little bit thicker for a stream. With a video, I probably should just drink water, but I don't. It's Pib Extra, but I call it Mr. Pib. Okay, I got you. I've still never had that either. Kyla keeps telling me she's going to bring me some from 
Georgia and then leaves me hanging high and dry. <laughs> or we could remember to get some the 15 times I've been down there by now. Mr. Pib is a knock you great value lovers. What? I'm so confused about what's going on now. What great one do you want next? I think Mule Deer slash Blacktail just make it a hybrid and call it good would be awesome. How old were you when you started hunting? Uh, so if you count like small game hunting, I believe I shot my first groundhog. I think I, oh no, it was in the summer. I was five or six. I must have been five because I got my first squirrel when I was six. I know that. And I, the reason I know that is because there was an article in the Pennsylvania Game News, not terribly long, I guess after I'd already shot my squirrel and it said like youngest PA hunter ever shoots squirrel and it said they were six. And I was like, I did that already. Why am I not in the game news? Guess my mom didn't tell everybody. But, um... Yeah, if that stuff counts, five or six. Deer hunting, I was ten. Where did you kill your great one, Whitetail? Kind of just outside the, um... I think it would be the Renaki West outpost on Leighton Lakes. Dr. Choice? No idea what that is. Still Miss Clearly Canadian? I've heard of that. I can't think of what it is, but I've heard of it. Do you ever still hunt with your parents? As in, like, hunt literally together? I don't think I have since I was, like, maybe 13. Now, like, we still hunt the same... Like, let's say, for instance, maybe, like, I'll do a drive for my dad, my dad will do a drive for me and my brother, things like that. But, yeah, someday, you know, once maybe dad can't get around as good, it'll be a reversal of rules. But for now, hunting together, but in different spots, if that makes sense. <laughs> my dad let me kill river rats he trapped in his hay barn when I was three, created the psychopath, and I've been shooting stuff ever since. I like to imagine Little Bottom Boy just <laughs> smoking river rats. Uh, Cannon, thank you for the super chat once again, by the way. I really appreciate the support there. I will uh, go ahead and read that even though the alert hasn't played yet. It'll, it'll eventually pop up. New bots want a map with hyenas, rhinoceros, and elephants would be your favorite map if it happened. And what other African animals would you like to see from South Africa? Love your content. Well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um... So the ones that... Oh, there's that. I didn't even think we killed that. The ones that I've wanted... Like, say, since Faranga came out... I still think Impala are a big missed opportunity. Those would be amazing. I love the looks of them. You said hyena already. Now we have Black Wildebeest on... Uh, Wait, the Hunter. That was one I've always wanted. Hyenas would be on there, but you mentioned that. I guess... Probably Eland. Cape Eland, to be more specific. Way the Hunter kind of got the rest of them, but in terms of things that we don't have in either game, those would be my my couple that I would add to it. Impala for sure, though. They, I love Impala. Have you ever heard of Dr. Thunder? Kyla has some right now. It's closer to Pib Extra than it is Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pib. Have you guys ever heard of Canadian Dry? Your humor? We've heard of it, but it's it's not good. <laughs> I only ever drink that like when I'm sick. My sister's fiance that like that's his soda of choice. <laughs> Bru <laughs> Maybe it's good that she's not a system viewer. Would you? Are White Claws sugary? I thought they were zero sugar. They're like zero everything. 
I'm pretty sure White Claws and those Michelob seltzers that we had are basically the same things. I know. Here all week. Anyone ever had Big Red? I have not heard of that one. What were the ones that we saw in Kentucky? It was called like a late one or something? It was a soda? Big League Chew, I don't know. I'm assuming that's not what you mean. <laughs> this is a great conversation we're having. They have Hard Mountain Dew in Florida. That stuff is dangerous. I finally got to try it when we were in Kentucky. They had it there at the Walmart. So I tried it. And then I brought the rest of the, whatever it was, 12 or 16 pack home for Kyla to try. Not gonna lie, she was kind of underwhelmed. Yeah, just like the monster I thought they were fine. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you drink it and go, oh my god, that's a Mountain Dew. They're good, I think, but you don't... If you're expecting it to taste like Mountain Dew and then have a little alcohol, whatever, aftertaste, that's not what it is. Big Red is awesome, it's in Texas, okay. Any success this bow season? Not with a bow, at least. Uh, my brother got two does with his, which, ironically, is my bow. <laughs> he, he had his... He bought a new thumb release. He, I, and I've seen him do the thing that he felt was a problem. He felt like he punched the trigger on his wrist strap release, which he did. He was definitely not a smooth release shooter with that type of release. So he got a thumb button release. And I guess he wasn't used to it yet. He drew his bow back, no arrow in it, just with the thumb button to like kind of see what it felt like. Dry fired it by accident. The thing basically blew up on him. Anyway, so he's using my dart and bow from last year, the Spectra. I killed one deer with that bow. It was a, you know, my biggest bow buck. My second biggest buck ever down in West Virginia with it. He's since, I guess, inherited it due to his blowing up. And he killed two does with it the first two weeks of the season. Mountain Dew Baja Blast? I mean, hard to beat. very much not ethical but it should make it very much dead when I started grinding I shoot everything but then my herds just keep moving and I couldn't find them so I just shot the bucks yet it can be really effective to shoot everything it seems like that can help with respawns but you are gonna get them moving around a lot <laughs> what's up Zach thank you for the 14 months welcome back a goofy goober indeed I don't lie, but I feel like you combined uh, Goofy Goober and that was it. I like I love Krabby Patties, whatever the song is that the uh, old health inspector lady sings. Fountain pop is a crime. Why? Do you prefer cans, bottles, or fountain? Assuming we're talking about soda, yeah, probably fountain. I don't know what else would be in a fountain actually. Sometimes the brain doesn't work. <laughs> they used to have frozen Baja Blast at Taco Bell? Yeah. I know. <laughs> they had uh, some kind of like birthday, free birthday reward thing, right? It was like a Baja Blast freezy thing. And I was like, oh, cool. I'll get one of those. It was like the size of a pudding cup. It was pathetic. I'm sure it was healthier than a giant Baja Blast, but you know what? It was my birthday. I didn't care. And I was sad. On my foul deer grind, I have twos in my shooting zones. What should I do? I don't know enough about shooting zones and whatever else stuff. To be honest, like, I guess if they're in your shooting zones, you're supposed to shoot them. But I really don't understand the, uh, the full scope of how you do that well enough to answer that question. Are Baja Blast limited time? They used to be, but I don't think anymore. There'll be limited time like in stores. Like for instance, randomly Walmart will carry it for like maybe a month or two and then they don't carry it the rest of the year. He looks a little... Is that a light brown or something or is that just the way the lighting is? I think we gotta get a little closer. 
McDonald's Fountain Coke is a special blend that you can only get at McDonald's? I've heard that. It is. I mean, there's a reason they say it's better at McDonald's. It is definitely, like, there is a notable difference. Rare, possibly? Eh, I think it's common. One way to definitely find out. Make it dead. What, Zach? <laughs> uh, there was a reference in there. I missed it. Wrestle the Crocs? Uh, Crocky. Did I do it? Just found your channel. Do you play Way the Hunter also? I do. Uh, actually just had a video on Way the Hunter yesterday. Aggressive? Are you sure? Uh, maybe he is. Seems to be very confused about what he's aggressive at. But he is aggressive. He's very mad. He'll figure it out. You know what? I think I was 0 for 2 on that being decent shots. Hit him again. Anyway, uh, the one that we're actually worried about... I think he's dead right there. A mad croc run or crawl. We're not too fast. <laughs> Look at that guy. That's the one that we just shot. Not the brightest bulb in the box. Might be the dimmest. Alright, now he's hiding. Fairly confident that other one wasn't a rare. Eh, yeah, just a dark brown. Are there two? There are. Hey, it died. <laughs> Australian porcupine, we're working on making it one, that's for sure. Ah, right, we're gonna get back to calling things in and getting them with the bow. Fountain pop is generally just bad. I think you're generally just bad. Congrats on joining the few of us in the Dark Brown Raccoon Dog Club. Honestly, man, if you hadn't gotten that one, there's a pretty good chance I wouldn't have taxed that and would have had no idea. I, like, I was... I picked, picked up that track. And I thought, like, isn't that that thing Hatchet has a diamond of? And then, of course, it was Max Weight, too. So I thought maybe I was going to join that club. But I really doubt that I would have realized Dark Brown's rare if I didn't already know you had one. We aren't friends anymore. We were friends. News to me. Thinking about a muzzleloader specifically uh, for maybe the CVA wolf. Never mind. I see what you're saying. Uh, it's cheaper option with great reviews. Should I go with that one or spend more for a higher end option? I'm not super familiar with that one. Hold on. Definitely is not terribly expensive. Spook before we get to call it in. My bet would be that it's probably going to get the job done like 99% as good as something you spend more money on. Guns generally are, you know, you get what you pay for type investments, but so long as you're not buying something from like a shady guy in a van. All, and I say this about bows too, like, all modern gun and bow technology is up there so that you're getting a quality product. Make sure to maintain it, especially with a muzzle loader too, like, you gotta clean it often, that sort of thing. I think you'd be fine with that. Should I purchase the new DLC? Eh, I wouldn't say it's a necessity. The 44 is awesome and the collar is nice. I enjoy using the recurve, like we're doing that right now. If you're looking for something new and different to do in the game, sure. But I don't think it's like a... 
you know, this is the new meta weapon. I wouldn't put it there with the AR pack or... God, Smoke and Barrels, was it, the M1? Pulling for you to lose tonight. Isn't soup, uh... Hang on, hold that thought. Zach, thank you so much for the super chat. Goodness gracious, man. What in the world am I reading? You see, they have a cluster of nerves located in their nostrils, so I should be able to use my thumb to take down a Tyrannosaur, but for obvious safety reasons, I will use a sharp stick instead. Are we rolling? Okay. Open the cage. <laughs> was that a quote? I thought that was going to be Jurassic Park, but that definitely wasn't a Jurassic Park quote. I think we should try it and see what happens. What was I re- Oh, soup losing? Isn't soup beating acid? Or am I stupid? Oh, I think... I think if you lose and I win, I can get back into fifth in one spot of the playoffs. I guess, yeah, the guy above you... See, I was taking the perspective that, like, I think all top four guys are losing right now, bottom boy. But, in theory, I guess you want fourth specifically to lose. Or maybe it's top three guys are losing. No. Soup is fifth. It is top four. Anything amazing yet? Actually, yeah, we killed a, uh, a piebald Rusadir. Too shy of gold, which was a bummer, but... Pretty cool. We called him in, got him with a recurve. Definitely didn't expect to find something like that. It was early on, too. Why is my brother spamming me? Where are you hunting tonight? Yeah, it was right. Twenty points behind acid right now, but I'm projected to win. 20? Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Thanks, Marshawn. Maybe we can come that one in. Wind is not terrible. Open space. Well, I think those couple of steps. I didn't spook the smaller one. We'll still try. Oh, I got you, Zach. Thank you for the super chat again. Hunter Primal reference. I knew there was a reason that in my head I was like, this is a thing I've seen before. It was on one of them, uh, little, like, Hunter Mate thingies you could pick up, right? I need to see why Soup's going to win down 20 points. Soup. Oh. Oh, yeah, you should be fine. You got a lot of players left. You're a few months late? It's fine. Hope you find an albino diamond on your own. That would be nice. What's the magpie call sound like? I don't know. Do you think it's as depressed as the... Canada Goose? We'll have to try it. Least favorite map? Um, it's probably Mississippi Acres. It's better, I guess, now. Since gators are actually aggressive and you can call them in if you want with this new color. But it's still... New England only clears it by a little bit. And I think it's because... The species layout's just a little bit better. There's nothing really that intrigues me on Mississippi outside of gators. Like, whitetail, sure, but if I'm going to hunt whitetail, I'm going to hunt them quite literally on any other map. Are the sandbar ported from Classic? Nope. They're fairly different. Why? Is sandbar even good? Uh, like, meat-wise? What you mean? What is happening here? All right, that works. Okay, we want to hear magpie calls. We can do that. Can we do that? Oh, it's at the top. Oh, no, we have heard this. Meh. <laughs> Meh. That's all it is. Mississippi is literally your favorite map? Okay, I have to ask. Is Mississippi the closest map to, like, where you live in real life? Because if that's the case, I can see that. If that's not the case, I am curious as to why it's your favorite map. Not being like, what's wrong with you? I'm just curious. Ooh, close. Almost whiffed. Sounds like a dying deer. A very sad dying deer. 
no one has been as lucky as Acid this season, you are very correct. Speaking of dinosaurs, Netflix's prehistoric animal documentary on Wednesday. I guess Kyla's already aware of this because she's nodding her head. Must like all the American flags on Mississippi. There you go. Old Medved best map, like prior to the muskier drink time changes and stuff. I like it now. I wasn't a huge fan of it prior to the changes. Looks and sounds like it should have been Louisiana Acres. This this is about to sound ignorant. Uh, is there a huge difference between the two states? Like, game-wise and stuff? They need a moose multi-mount. I would agree with that. You should live in Houston, so as far as hunting goes, it's as close to that as there is. It was also the newest map when I started playing. That makes sense. I, I can understand that. What made you play this game from day one? You know, it was a little bit of a rocky start for me with Call of the Wild. Um, so I I had played Classic, I guess for, well, it would have been about six years, but like seriously for about three years before Call of the Wild was announced and, and was uh, released eventually. So obviously, a new hunting game from the same company that made a game that I've been playing for, you know, half a decade, and again, they have been playing a lot for the prior three years. Like, obviously, I wanted to get into it. But I, I really did expect the Hunter Call of the Wild to basically be updated, new graphic version of the Hunter Classic. So, while I played the game, and, you know, I generally had fun with it, I didn't like it nearly as much as Classic. The first... Oh boy, I don't know, six, eight months? I was just kind of like, okay, you know, this game's there too, I can play them both. A little change of pace, whatever. It was really when I started to, like, learn how diamonds worked and that sort of stuff that I started to enjoy Call of the Wild more, because there was all of a sudden, like, there was a big thing to work towards. Like, there's, I don't know, at the time, 20 species in the game? and I gotta try to get a diamond of all of them, that's something I can really sink some time into. Pretty much from, from then is what really got me like playing and enjoying the game. I swear I saw a name that I haven't said hi to. What's up, Logan? There it is. How do you know when an age cycle has happened? Typically, like if I'm trying to age a particular animal, let's say I've got a four star whitetail and I'm trying to see if it can get to five star, I'll typically find something else on the map to, you know, pay attention to. Maybe it's a, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a one-star adult or something like that that I can, is right outside an outpost or something, I can quickly check and see if it's gotten any bigger. Is that also a pile? You gotta be kidding me. I think it is. I'm pretty sure. Yep. <laughs> this is a weird hunt. Not sure what gold for Sambar is, but I think that this guy will definitely fall short of that. This one is a pumpkin piebald? Pumpkin! Pumpkin! Have you hunted anything other than whitetail in real life? Uh, big game, no. I mean, I've hunted like turkeys and small game and stuff. One of these days we're gonna get out west and hunt pronghorn and elk and mule deer and things like that, but it's for a little bit down the road. You're a weird hunt, thank you. What great one would you like next? I'm still on the Mule Deer Blacktail train. Alright. I think we got good enough. Oh. Is this too steep? Mm, it's gotta be a spot. Oh. That'll work. Life is so much easier when we can hear and the call still plays. Hope we get a great one, Quail. That would be a special one for anybody that gets it. Because I don't think everybody would. Oh boy. Okay, that 
maybe is it? Was it up to 124? I think that's the right one. Really want a roadier great one. Honestly, like, of the, uh... At least antlered species where... Like, there could be a huge improvement over diamonds. Roadier might be number one, because the, the diamond roadier still... Even though, like, True Racks made them bigger than the old legacies, they still could be a lot bigger than they are. This is gonna be really interesting. Wouldn't mind if she would just kind of get out of here so we could hear what's going on. Because I half wonder if he's gonna sneak up to the left. Oh. Okay, I don't know what that call was. Unless he... I don't know. I'm gonna lay here and wait. Listen for footsteps. Because I could totally see him walking right kind of around us towards the collar. There he is. Not really sure what he's up to, but I mean, we can make that shot. Kind of doesn't seem to care that the collar's doing a thing, though. Just gonna, gonna stop for a minute. Oh, behind a tree. Uh, hello? Okay. Pick a spot and stand still, please. Look good. Ooh, maybe not good. I don't know if we can save that. That's gonna we're gonna need an angle on this. He's not dying yet. No, he is. What are the odds he slows to a trot for a second? Probably not gonna. Ah, oh, that was close. That's what I wanted. Slow down for just a millisecond. That's gonna end up losing the medal. We must have shot right under the vitals. Oh well. You pick a spot and stay still? Thank you. Kylo Gaming? Oh my. <laughs> what time do a blacktail deer drink? 16 to 20, I think. Swing and a miss. Love the teleporting? Yeah, that was that was rather unfortunate. First part is we get to track it for 12 miles now. I instinctively went to claim a skill issue. If only YouTube was that cool. He's already dead, so I guess there's no hope of somehow saving him. I was hoping he would just like, for some reason, stand over there for a minute. I think they typically kind of sprint until they drop kind of deal though. Kind of want a great one lion. The only issue is they've been talking forever about like only doing base game great ones, which obviously for is not part of the base game. Beard did say maybe in the lead up to New England though, or it could have even been with Great One Fallow. Like they're getting close or something like that to moving beyond just base game species for great ones. I missed that lesson, Danny. What caliber do you use for deer? I use a 7mm mod 8. Same here. Even though I struggled to just say 7mm mod 8. What's one video you're really proud of? One video I'm really proud of. Mm. I mean, like, removing stuff like, you know, I killed something cool in insert video. It's probably still my real life uh, big buck that I shot. The reason is I I must have had a hundred hours editing that video, like trying different combinations of ways to to get it to look and sound and come across the way I wanted. Cause okay, <laughs> that shows we didn't the ear, which I promise we didn't. Oh no, we did. It ducked down and stopped our arrow. <laughs> It just would have been a little silver anyway. That thing has the ear of steel. That shot was dead on. 
gonna hit right in the lung. That's 12 out of 12 dumb, but all right. <laughs> Two pies today. Anyway. What was I getting at? Oh yeah. Those episodes were basically made for TV. We had a season of our uh, Meat Hunters hunting videos on Wild TV, like in Canada, and I think Sweden and some other places, Wild TV airs. So trying to fit what probably could have been a 40 minute video into 22 and a half minutes, and then again, like all the combos and stuff. I think that's the one I'm maybe at least fairly recent history most proud of. Doesn't he also have a thousand albino moose? Uh, 970 it was. A strong ear. The 200 whitetail? It's not my favorite video I've ever done. It's the, probably my favorite stream, or at least my favorite Twitch stream. But the video itself was... I felt like I had a hard time... I don't know, introducing it. I don't know what else I could have done, really. But it was hard to just... I wanted to make an intro. Like, originally I had planned... I had a whole... I don't remember what I did, either. But I had a whole thing where I, like, talked about all the years of looking for one itself. And I ended up removing that because I felt like it just took away from the watching experience, the viewing experience. But it just... I think I should have done more of it. I just wanted to get the video out and show people because it was something I wanted for so long. The pierced sandbar. The fact that an earshot killed it, too. Should I get Call the Wild or Classic for more realistic hunting? Are you asking which of the two should you get for more realistic hunting? Because if that's your question, classic 100%. Um, I'm also reading that question as should I get Call of the Wild or should I get classic because it's more realistic. That's going to be up to like personal preference, what you're looking for in a hunting game. If you had to pick a non-antler great one, can I pick horns? Because I'd say Cape Buffalo. Uh, classic is free too. Yeah, it's free. You can at least give it a try and see what you think. Next classic stream will be Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. Um, there's a chance I do that one a little bit earlier. I'm still going to want to hunt Wednesday, but Wednesday is the classic Halloween event. So, definitely going to mess with that on stream. No doubt that's going to be the plan that night. The current kind of plan that at least had been that we were going to pretty much make this the last classic stream of the year. Those of you that have been watching the classic streams over on Twitch for a couple of years now, you know, sometime around the beginning of the rut, the classic streams have to take a back seat because, you know, usually even, you know, any night I can get out, I'll be out, you know, all day and it's too late or too early the next morning or whatever to do the classic stream. So, potentially last one for a while, but maybe we'll sneak an extra stream in even if it's not the scheduled time just to do the, the uh, Halloween event. Got a thousand coyote with Zaggy. I got a thousand coyote with uh, Jaxie Beard, Sean Johns, and my buddy Jay. I think it was us three or four. Math is hard. Uh oh. <laughs> I left my collar up there. Hey there. Now don't you put your head in the way. It's cheating. We only allow one deer per stream to do that. And it's going to be a rare. No classic? Ah, no. Like I said, I'll try to, you know, squeeze an extra stream in here or there at least for the Halloween event. I might be able to do one and absolutely no promises on this. I think we're doing Thanksgiving here this year and then going to Georgia for Christmas. Oh, but I'm going to Indiana the week before Thanksgiving. So I probably got a prep content for rifle season. Anyway, there's a chance I get an extra stream in there somewhere, you know, if videos are going well and content is prepped for the first week of rifle, but just depends. So many vids, so little brain. Are you saying I've made many vids and have a little brain? Because if that's what you're meaning, I'd say you're right. Would you say 70 plus diamond red gear is a lot for a grind? It's a lot if you're not herd managing. If you are herd managing, uh, it's still a high number, but it's not as crazy. 
I think a lot of people get, you know, like for my fallow grind, for instance, 6,000 kills without herd management was a hundred and some odd diamonds. But fallow deer, a little easier. Kyla's planning the, to stream the classic event. There you go. She'll rope me into joining at least one of those. Miss the braid. Well, that tree has a big hitbox. Just found albino blacktail. Nice. Jealous of your 294 non tip muley in classic you kill with the 303? Oh boy, when was that? What would you like to see for this year's Halloween update? Um, provided that we're talking about classic, there's been a couple of hints that were given out. I think we know it's going to be a different map. It's going to be a whitetail map. And I think the other hint was just that it's going to be on Wednesday. So I've been saying settlers because my whole theory with why they changed from Timbergold to Bush Rangers, because I know there was complaints about Timbergold having the Halloween event because it's a bunch of people's favorite map. And a lot of people are like, hey, I want to hunt my bighorn, like, get this stupid fog off this map, basically. Uh, so I thought they changed the Bush Rangers basically because it's a less popular map. If they want to do a different map and still a non-popular map, I think Settlers is the answer. And it is a map with Whitetail, which we've been told that's what we're looking at. So uh, as far as what I want to see from that, I guess kind of like piggyback off last year's event. It was awesome. All the different species that could charge you and stuff. Maybe add a, uh, I don't know what kind of new weapon you would do. A repeating weapon. Nah, the shotgun is. Ooh, no, I do know. Give us silver buckshot for the rabbits because they're annoying. I guess it depends if they're, well, no, they said white tail map. I guess it could be white heart. It's not going to be Ruguru and it's not going to be Red Feather because there's too much water. And charging animals in Classic will turn and flee as soon as they run into water. So it has to be Whiteheart, Settlers, or Loggers. Whiteheart wouldn't have rabbits, so I guess the Silver Buckshot is dependent on rabbits. But so long as they do murder bunnies, then I think that's the main new thing I want. The bunnies were the star? I agree. I do want to be able to kill them more easily, though, even though they were the star. Sword of Herd Management, I get bored and shoot lower levels sometimes. Also, I got a super rare Big Rack Red Deer. Nice. I get you with getting bored and shooting the smaller ones. That's probably the way that I realistically need to uh, approach it if I want to try to do Great One Grinding again. Like, at least manage on some level, but shoot small ones when I get bored of it, because I definitely get bored of it. Good thing we don't have any breath when he stopped. Need that 44. We got so used to punching through lungs, we're making a bunch of oof shots here. Finally made it to a live stream. Welcome on in. Glad you can make it. Will you ever grind moose again? Uh, you know, never say never. We'll see. I think there's a chance, you know... Let's say in December a new great one comes out and it's going to be... I don't know. I don't think there's anything left that would be easy. Fallow Deer was always the one that was on the list that could be like, okay, if great one Fallow Deer comes out, because Diamond Fallow are so easy, a great one will be. And it still was a big struggle for me. Um, let's say it's... um, I don't know. Rosebud Elk. That's one that a lot of people think it'll be. And for some dumb reason, we get one within the first week. I could see that being a catalyst to going back to Moose and Black Bear, but as is, at least. Assuming that a new great one comes out and it takes me a normal amount of time to get one, I'm not sure I'm going to want to go back and do other challenging grinds. The new great one's going to be something super lame like Coyotes. I could imagine a great one Coyote being cool. I think grinding for it's going to be awful no matter what. I think furs and stuff, though. 
Koi Wolf vibes. You could do some cool stuff. Inquisitor, thanks for becoming a two month shoesty. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Favorite map, Leighton Lakes. How often do water buffalo troll? I would say they're like a normal amount of trolling. Not super often, but you know, they're, they're no kangaroo that trolls every time or anything like that. What's up, Dontrell? In classic right now, hunting Timbergold. Good choice. Timbergold was, I think, the last map that we hunted in Classic, and it was very kind to us. Busy crashing my car. Oh, no, Mr. Freest. I'm assuming since you're in here saying that, you're okay. Uh, how's the state of the car? Kind of makes me sad. I hated Classic because I haven't paid to play 99% of the game. Because I'm addicted to Classic, it honestly has to be one of the best hunting games. Back, you know, up until they went free to play, which was either 2018 or 2019, might have been 18. It was definitely, you know, very pay to win, pay to play, whatever you want to call it. To a degree, I guess you could say it's pay to win now, but you can definitely earn your way through if you do grind at it, which is the case for any free game that has a built in, like, store, basically. Um, but like you said, it really is, I, I maintain that it's the best hunting game ever made, and I'm not sure it's ever going to be topped. Maybe one day, but looking at how long it's had that distinct, distinction, oh boy, that was, that was rough. I don't know that I expect a new game to come along and beat it. Everyone's okay, but my poor car might have driven her last mile. Ah, oh, man, that sucks. That's always, at least for me, it's always like a mental hurdle to get over that. Like, it's weird how you, for some reason, care about a car, but is what it is. Better everyone being safe and okay than, and the car being the one that took the, the brunt of it than anything else. Just got a 400 plus Rocky Elkin Classic, nice. Classic hasn't lost its luster. Which is amazing to really think about. I definitely, in the last... Well, how long has Call of the Wild been out? Oh my god. It's going to be seven years, I think? In February? That's ridiculous. I'm getting old. Um, in the last, like, seven years of playing Call of the Wild, there's been times where I've played Classic less. But I still, anytime I jump on Classic, I still have so much fun. It's so much anticipation of, like... You know, is this the hunt where my 400 non-tip muley shows up? Is this the hunt where we get a 400 elk? All these years later, it's just the perfect balance of like the really special things. 200 whitetail, 400 elk. Uh, you can even put like, let's say 300 plus non-tip whitetail, these sorts of things in there. They're rare enough to keep you coming back, but there's still that other side, you know, like maybe a 220 mule deer or a 180, 190 whitetail that you get frequently enough to, you know, it's not like you never get anything. It's just, it's perfectly balanced. Drop Naji, what, in fantasy? I had to start him because I, I thought I made a good trade. You're gonna think I'm insane. Uh, I traded Travis Kelsey, like I traded Kelsey for, uh, what is his name? Kyron Williams of the Rams and... George Kittle. Why did I do that? Um, I had the worst skill position draft of all time. My receivers have been garbage. My only running back that's been okay has been Derrick Henry. So I have Najee Harris, I have Derrick Henry, and I have Javante Williams. Got Kyron Williams too. Uh, yeah, he's on IR, so that was a complete waste. But Najee got me like 16 points last night and looks like it's going to win me the game. I'm winning by .4 and I have Kittle tonight, but I'm afraid of a stat correction, so I'm going to play him. I got oofed out of the championship last year of a stat correction. I had points on the Thursday night game, and then they stat corrected a Tennessee Titans defense thing, and that flipped the game and I ended up losing, which by the way, I would have won the championship too, which was great. I'll come wear a deer costume, I like it. Can't believe Ky Kyla let you do that trade, Mr. Swift. It's a good thing I didn't tell her what I was going to do. And of course, you know, don't worry, he went out for 35 points. 
<sighs> Again, you know, I'm. It looks like I'm gonna win, but I just think Kyron Williams being on IR is gonna get me in the end. I'm already like eighth in the league. Think I'm maybe gonna move up one spot this year or this week, but I needed good production out of Kyron Williams the next couple of weeks. I don't know how in the world I'm supposed to stay afloat till he comes back. Correction, she's Mrs. Kelsey. Oh boy. His name is Mr. <laughs> Fox. Uh, I love how mad people get about that. I think that's hilarious. Epic A Rod reference. Do you have points and faster reloads? Yes, all three. Got an albino super rare white till last night. There you go, that's awesome, man. Thank you for streaming. I'm sitting in an urgent care for a work injury. Oh god, everybody, are you okay? <laughs> Got multiple people having strokes today. There must be something in the water. I'm gonna make Kylo get a, uh, what do they call them things? I know Jeff Sturgis uses them. It's some kind of like a line you tie to your stand and you can like tether yourself in basically from the ground up. I'm gonna carry her up into the stand. No more accidents today. When did Grey Fox drink? Uh, 1730? 1700-ish, their drink zone starts. It might be 1730. Can you name the 400 plus Rocky? Hang on, I'll, uh... Is naming him Jokic lame? Do you get the reference, first of all? Haven't fallen out of a stand or ladder yet. I've been close. Yeah, the I've been close considering everybody's having struggles today is the, <laughs> the reason. Safety line? That might be all it is, yeah. The name of it, I mean. Real original name. Oh, you said that. Don't mind me. Make Kyla sit on the ground in a chair to hunt? You know, I don't remember if my dad made the purchase or if maybe, like, my brother got it for him and he uses it. But they make these things, I think they just call them chair blinds. It's basically a camping chair that has like a flip up top to it and it kind of becomes its own little blind. It wouldn't be much good for a compound bow, but my dad's back and whatever that's called, rotator cuffs and stuff are all screwed up so he has to use a crossbow anyway. He hasn't killed anything from it yet, but apparently it works pretty good. Best kill? God, I, I guess across like everything ever. Would it be the Pieball Diamond Gray Fox? I mean, the thing is like, I got my Albino Diamond Moose sort of like before Super Rares were something a lot of people had. It was maybe one of the first 20 or so killed in the game. But I think a lot of people have since killed Super Rare Moose, so I kind of think the Pieball Diamond Gray Fox is more rare. Get some bubble wrap, there you go. After struggling for two weeks with OBS, turns out I plugged in my monitors backwards when I moved my office, I'll be pouting in my game chair. Oh no. <laughs> it's, it is truly amazing. Like the littlest things that can completely screw up computers and stuff. When I was in high school, my, uh, computer science teacher had a one-week vacation in Hawaii towards the end of the year so he just left a bunch bunch of projects for us to do and it was our computer science class was two of us that were halfway serious about it me and a kid named Sean and like 10 people that were just you know that was just their elective they were just going to take the course and be done with it so I don't think they even I'm not even sure if they needed to do those assignments like I'm pretty sure he just decided to us to but we were allowed to work together and we spent the first day we got like six of the ten projects done and got to the seventh and just got stuck and literally the entire rest of the week until like the last day we couldn't figure out this one we had everything seemingly right and nothing would work one negative sign <laughs> that was all it was we had a negative sign in the wrong place and it completely broke everything the dumbest thing is when it comes to computers will you read a story i'm ready to nap that might send me into a blissful slumber once there was an ugly barnacle. It was so ugly that everyone died. The end. That didn't help at all. Anyway. Hope you appreciate that. K 
can confirm. <laughs> you know, we can't call in Stubble Quill. Hey, look, it worked. Starting to get some big males on camera more and more frequently in Illinois. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Considering they're Illinois big males, I bet they are indeed very big. Would you like a great one elk? I think it'd be good. <laughs> Impressive, thank you. I tried real hard. I was gonna try to, like, turn it into some kind of big male reference, but I figured at that point the, the reference would be lost. Who knew... Th Those are some nice tracks. Want to follow them. I do want to follow them. Who knew that deleting all the... DLLs would kill your PC? Me, 1996? I, I wouldn't know that because I don't know what a DLL is. Stands for, uh... Deer... Leg... Laugh. Got it. You were born in a thousand and nine? I mean, we knew you were old, but... <laughs> Oop, 1996. How'd you end up with a thousand and nine? Killed my first deer on Saturday with a slug that shot two feet right and hit an artery? Hey. Rather be lucky than good. Sometimes that's the way it goes. As long as, uh, hopefully you can get a chance to shoot the gun a little bit and figure out what's going on there, but as long as it got the deer dead, Good and quickly. Like I said, sometimes you just gotta hope to be lucky. A core Windows file. Okay, I gotcha. Talk about the big males and the small males, but never the medium males. I wonder how they're doing. They're probably pretty sad. You know, they look at old, you know, Jimmy and... Billy, the, the biggest males there ever were, and they're just sitting there like, why didn't I grow up to be someone who would be shot at and cherished? <laughs> Bring on the old man soup jokes, all because the zero and nine are side by side, but how did you get the, so the nine and the six aren't side by side, so I'm going to need a better explanation than that. Yeah, back in my day, the nine and the six, they're upside down, I don't know. Shooting four inches right on Thursday, so I don't know how it got to that point. Hmm. Yeah, unless it maybe like clipped a branch, but slugs are pretty. Uh, what's the word? I can't think of what I want. Brush safe, I guess. They they shouldn't really be deflecting off anything. They should kind of punch through with stuff. You are so odd. Thank you, Buck Junior and Spike. Can you use the new uh, collar? I haven't seen it yet. We can. I'll just throw it out here for a second so you can see how it works. We're going to try to call something in in a minute. But like, for instance, we can choose to call any of these species here. If we wanted to call a, uh, let's say, hog deer. Hog deer, rooster deer, and sandbar all are this weird, basically, it's supposed to be a fawn. Like, I think the stress call, it says mating call, but... I'm pretty sure that's a fawn distress call. But anyway, uh, you set it out. It does the calling. The animals will go to the location of the caller. So in theory, you can set up, you know, with better wind or whatever. We've had it, you know, with decent success today. We had a piebald rooster deer, a piebald sandbar deer. Unfortunately, the sandbar, for whatever reason, stopped coming in about halfway. And when we shot, it dipped his head down and actually caught the arrow with the deer so it didn't penetrate to a lung. That was a bit of a bummer. Does it make noise when placed? It does not. So you can place it, you know, if you're 30 meters away from something, you do have to at least crouch to place it. I don't think you can hold it when you're prone. Let me check that. Oh no, you can. So yeah, whatever distance away you get from something, you can, uh, you can place it. Oh, that was close. I think we shot right under him. Get out of here. That was unfortunate. A whole flock of pterodactyls. You'd think they're pterodactyls as loud as they are. All right, so the wind is bad, but we're gonna try to call in one of those axes here just so you can see how it works. Assuming I haven't spooked everything by yeeting arrows around. 
Oh, the back sight was the... Yeah, that'll do it. That could definitely do it. And you can change the e-color volume in audio settings? I mean, who knew? Micro wrappers? True. More accurate. What's up, Incognito? Gonna start grinding for a white tail great one, so pray for my sanity. Still have PTSD flashbacks from my red deer grind? I can imagine. Hopefully this one goes a little more smoothly. Well, I saw them coming in, and then they just hid behind the hill. Something about the landscape of VC just doesn't do it for me. Put these species on latent-esque map and I'd never leave. I think it's underrated how important, like, the landscape, the environment, and everything is. Like, Yukon, I think, one of the reasons I enjoy it so much, there's some good species on it, but it's the snow, it's the mountains, it's the way everything's laid out. It's just perfect. There was a bigger one, I thought. Oh, that one. Should we take an 80 meter shot with a bow? Probably not. Are we gonna? I think so. Oh, well, maybe not quite 80. I thought he stopped. Well, all right. Let's wait for him to get closer. I can see him moving around. I think he knows we're here. That's a little loud of you. The number one reason I dislike Mississippi Acres because you can't see anything. It is nice when hunting to be able to see. I would uh, I would agree with that. Just picked up a small diamond mule deer. Nice. Wish I could turn fog off on PS5. Yeah, the lack of ability to change graphic settings on consoles is kind of annoying. I'm beginning to question if he didn't just spook. But anyway. Uh, for those that wanted to see the e-collar. They're all going to where the collar's at rather than, you know, walking towards me and spooking. Gives us a chance to get a shot off. I'm about to take a terrible angle. Arrows have pretty stupid penetration in this game, so that might somehow be lethal. That definitely was. Got a crowned Wildebeest and Multiplayer last night. There you go. Still one of my all-time favorite looking rares. I wish it could be... That they could be male and female, but... Here's what it is. 10% for tonight? Oof. It's acting like we shot it... Oh, maybe that was... The Ruza Deer. The Axis Deer isn't dead yet. Is Ani the way to pronounce your name? Hopefully I'm getting that right. Welcome on in. Anything good besides the piebald rooster? We had a piebald sandbar as well. Uh, also would have been a silver. I say would have been because we tried to shoot it with a bow around 50 meters away. It just, for whatever reason, it stopped coming into the call. So I alerted it, went to take the shot, and right as we shot, it kind of like ducked down. And we literally hit it directly in the ear, which completely stopped the arrow from going any further. It didn't hit a vital. Next classic hunt, you should use the 30-30 lever action. Well, next classic hunt, we're going to end up doing the Halloween event. So it may be sometime until we do like a regular classic hunt again. That's true, Clark. I think it's probably underrated that you can set up those broadside shots. I'm so used to like, you know, spot something and shoot it right away. It's rare that I spend the time to think through, like, how do I want to set that up? Oh, hey, there he is. <laughs> a little late because of baseball, but I'm here for the end of the stream. I'm glad you make it in, man. Hopefully baseball went well. Matthew just got back from school. Welcome on in as well. What new map do you think we'll get? I don't even know if I have, like, a... A what I think it'll be type of guess. I still want it to be Greenland. Give me musk ox and arctic fox, arctic wolves, caribou. I'd be a happy camper. Snowshoe hare, throw them in there. We shall see. 
PA forecast for 40s, 20s? Hold on. Does it? I didn't see such encouraging things. Oh, it's just... I guess really starting Tuesday, there's like a... It'll probably change some. There's like a 15 degree daytime high temperature drop. And then Wednesday is getting to that 40s as the high 30s, 20s. I got you. It's going to be a Midwest America map like Nebraska. That's what everybody wants. How did you know? Hope we get Arctic map in Call of Duty. I mean, it's about time for the clues. Really hoping we get something next week. Have we gotten clues, like in-game clues at least? Or are you talking about like, you know, how they did Emerald Coast? Upside down stuff. Little tiny, like, small stuff that's not actually in-game. I miss the in-game clues. Like, the wolf howls on Layton in the lead up to Yukon, those were great. The, uh, the croc thing on Silver Ridge Peaks was interesting. I'm not sure about, or alligator rather. Not sure about that one. I think the boxing gloves for Silver Ridge Peaks was pretty cool. They had, this was also on Layton, they had like a, uh, see I'm too dumb to know what this was. There was a, it was like an African, uh, almost like a mini sculpture thing. Somebody help me and tell me what statue, I don't know. It was like way up in the mountains of Layton, a place you'd never expect anybody to go. Somebody found it. Like that stuff was cool back then. Full herd of big rack muleys in classic. That's that's a good thing. Promising sign. I guess it was that one. We should really hunt like where the wind isn't terrible. I don't want to go down there because we can't call in ruse. Yeah, what the heck? We'll keep going. We'll figure it out. So question for you, what map has the highest density of whitetail mule deer? Doesn't have to be the same map. Ooh. I feel like highest density of whitetail would be Reventuli Coast. Highest density of mule deer? I, I might give it to Parquet if I really thought about it. Parquet has a lot of mule deer. They're just in different places than they used to be. Rancho obviously is good. Silver Ridge Peaks is very good. I don't know. SRP, you think? SRP does have a lot, too, in small areas. Yeah. Definitely, I guess if you consider density, like a bunch in a small area, it'd probably be SRP. Rancho does have a ton. Definitely does have a ton. White Rhyme Ridge, but Call of the Wild would be cool. That's essentially, I mean, you know, like I said, Greenland and Muskox, but something like White Rhyme Ridge in Classic is exactly what I'm hoping for. And I, I remember talking about this way back. When Call of the Wild first came out, one of the selling points was this right here. You can see where I'm traveling through the grass, right? Classic did a little bit of that with White Rhyme Ridge just before Call of the Wild came out. It was, uh, I don't know, maybe in-game distance 10 meters worth. If you turned around, you could see your tracks in the snow. That stuff would immediately disappear. And I always thought Call of the Wild could do something amazing with paths through the snow. I really would love to see that. Now, I can see the other side of it where maybe, you know, because they can't just do that literally everywhere. It's got to be, you know... Maybe only the last couple of minutes worth of trails or something like that, and maybe that ruins the immersion, but I just, I'd love to see what they could come up with, because I think it'd be really cool. Always with the wind, I guess we'll just shoot that. Snow tracking, wouldn't it be cool? They, realistically, and Classic didn't and it was fine, but realistically they should redo like the blood trailing and everything. Probably too much work. I still want them to do it. New Hunter here. Thank you for your videos. They really helped me starting out. I have a question though. How useful is the reduced sound perk slash skill? I will show you a statistic. 
that will hopefully demonstrate the answer to that. Let me clean this uh, Lucidia real quick. Okay. So, when we go into our stats here, we can see over the years we have scared just a hair over 4 million total animals. Now, a whole bunch of that is going to be gunshots, four-wheelers, that sort of thing. But even still, 3.8 million of them are from hearing. 145,000 from eyesight, 17,000 from scent. So the vast, vast, vast majority of the time when you're spooking an animal, it's because they hear you. If you get those reduced sound skills that you're talking about, I think they're skills, they might, yeah, they're skills, not perks. Perks are weapons, but anyway, um, that will definitely cut down on how much stuff you spook. For crying out loud, they are going to insist on all the DLCs give us more doggos. I would, in fact, like another doggo. Hey, to Miss DM, we got to go work and stuff. Have a great day slash weeks. Sounds good, man. Appreciate you hanging out. We will hopefully catch you in the next one. Why is your shotgun accuracy 115%? At some stage, and maybe they still do it, they counted the multiple projectile hits as one shot, but many hits. So, like... You know, if you used a shotgun with birdshot, I think it's something like 47 pellets. So if you blasted a water buffalo at 5 yards, you'd have 47 hits for one shot. Your accuracy would then be like, what, 4,000 or something stupid? So you factor in all the times I've missed. And then for, I think it was just a brief period of time they had that screwed up. It was way over 200%. But yeah, because I never missed, you got it. <laughs> I should have said that. Uh, but no, they, um, they were calculating it wrong. You get a little rat dog that can only pick up a squirrel, or a quail, rather? I already have Shadow in real life, though. I don't need game Shadow. This is fun. Don't have the money for any DLC maps. What is the best free map? I would say Late Lakes, but one thing to consider... You can play any map, whether you own it or not, in multiplayer. As long as someone in the server owns the map DLC, the server will stay open. How about, how about we get little puppies and raise them to do whatever we want, like in the game? I'm going to raise mine to drive out the great ones. Been off the game for a few months, has there been an update? Uh, yes, so basically I don't have the new gun with me. But we have a new recurve bow that can attach a sight. Um, it's definitely a little bit weird. I will I will grant that. But the allure to it is the bow is the lightest weight weapon in the entire game, I believe. So the whole idea is you can basically have a bow for less inventory capacity. I thought that was level 9. Uh, and still be able to equip a sight like it's a compound. So that's the, uh, the advantage to that. Oh, that was just a touch forward. Good thing he turned. Then there is the Model 1894 44-lever action. Great gun. Love that thing. And there's the E-Color, which if this Red Deer wasn't already spooked, we would attempt to use. My god, is he ever going to quit running? Slow down, but he's 12 miles away now. Oh, well, level 9. I mean, I knew that was a troll, so. What's up, Andrew? Hot's going pretty good. We've killed two piebalds and we have this troll red deer out here that unfortunately we whiffed on. Gonna try to get another crack at it. Do you think great ones are too rare? Nah, I would say personally no. I think they're somewhere in the area of where they should be. Shot a 26 score grizzly. Nice, there you go. Pretty good one. You did shoot at him like I wouldn't stop running? I think you would stop running. I think you'd make it 10 feet and you'd be like, hands on your hips. <laughs> and that would be my chance to tell you about your car's extended warranty. I really like hunting with the new recurve in those sites. Oh, okay. I don't know why he was just standing there. I haven't messed with it much. I have shot it a little bit, but I haven't taken the time to like learn how to really do that yet. What are you doing? <laughs> are you okay? I was going to shoot him in the ankle of anything. It was terrible.
pretty sure that's a bad shot too. Oh, now you're gonna go in a straight line. Uh, I don't think we got along. There was a tiny bit of room to maybe get along, but it'll kill him. Big juke. Soup's gonna get shot at? No, I'm gonna tell him about his car's extended warranty. The adjustment to arrow ballistics really changed the windage factor for heavy arrows, missing a lot more at 60 meters with the 600 grain. Meaning... Are you overcompensating, like how it used to affect them more, or are you saying it affects them more now? And it used to affect them less. We need something between diamond and great one? Something that can't be grinded for, like a com almost like a rare, basically, like just completely random. But maybe unique furs, sort of like how great ones spawn, but again, that you couldn't really grind per se. I'm the poster child of don't take stupid shots. I am pretty good at taking terrible shots on stream and paying for it. The wind carries them further now, okay. Hey, what's up, Pixel? Half racks? I would take half racks. Give me a little, um, Hollywood and Way the Hunter type of half rack, like a deformed rack, basically. He likes to shoot and butcher his deer at the same time if possible. I am all about efficiency in life. Like, <laughs> that's a genuine thing. If I have two things to do, like, I have to, uh, maybe I have to make sure I edit a video, render the video, which... Basically, that's just letting the computer do its thing for 10 minutes. And then also, I gotta go, I don't know, eat lunch before I stream. I'm always, like, making sure I edit and render first, because it's gonna sit there for 10 minutes, and then I can go eat lunch and save that 10 minutes. Anything like that. Like, if I if there's something I gotta wait on doing, I'll always do that before I do anything else so that that can pass. Which t probably doesn't sound like a big thing, but... It's a, literally a daily thing with video making. Where did this guy go? Would have been way better off if we had Surge 12 here. How goes PA Archery? Eh. My brother got two does. I have not even flung an arrow yet. And we're kind of moving into the best time of year for bucks, so at least there's a chance of that. I did get a, a doe with my muzzle over though, so at least there was that. Oh, little low when we had that second shot. Yeah, I thought there was a chance at a neck. We we were too early on that. If I have to rake the leaves and mow the lawn, I mow the lawn. I feel like that's not quite the same thing, but I'll give it to you. Non-typicals for deer species would be an idea. Uh, yeah, I mean. If they could somehow do it in such a way to be like more rare than a diamond, less rare than a great one, I think that'd be cool. Need some cold air? We had it a little bit today. What's the temperature now? It says 55. I'm going to try to get out here after the stream. I don't know where I'm going to go. I only have a couple of spots here at the house that I really like. Might try my kind of morning spot, even though it's not a morning, and see what happens. Lots of 5 a.m. buck photos for me, but nothing in daylight yet. So this morning was like 30-something minutes low, which unfortunately Sunday morning was too. So Sunday morning, I really think the deer were going to move, because that was a day or a nighttime low temperature change of something like 10 degrees. But going from Sunday to Monday, there was basically no change. So anyway, I wanted to get out this morning. And I was going to go into my, basically like my really good spot. I have a stand that is essentially in what was my, my big bucks bedding area. And I know there's probably the best buck on the property right now. It's, I don't know. I'm not good at field judging scores for deer, but I think he's in the 130s. Um, he's moved through there past my cell cam a couple of times. I almost went back in there this morning because of the cold temps. But I was a little afraid of scaring stuff yet. I was like, I just don't think it's quite time to go back in there. And no sign of him on the cell cam. So I think it was best I didn't go. I gotta get... 
one more stand set up so I can have like another option. Imagine the new map's another European map? I mean, depending on where, I think there's probably still more species uh, diversity that they could do. Bucks haven't lost their mind for the ladies yet. Any day though now, th this is the this is the hard part about hunting this time of year. Unless you have, you know, I guess a bunch of land and a bunch of cameras and the ability to kind of like really track what's going on. It's almost like a you should be out as much as possible. Because eventually the does in the area are going to go in heat. And when that happens, like you're going to have a buck factory. Um, the problem with that is if you're going out every day and it's not a buck factory and the does aren't in heat, you're, you know, you're having some stent accumulation in those areas. Deer might start to avoid those stands. You might risk bumping stuff. So it's like picking the right time to be out. It is so much luck. Dur drugs every year, man. Every year. We're going to check this little spot right here. Then I think we'll go back to the second lodge with our couple of pies. Jackson, Jackson said Africa 2 is endgame. So out of curiosity, Danny, were you going to wordplay that with Factory? Because that's how I'm assuming you were saying that. New Canada map with new great one, Mulia Rosie. I could accept such a thing. Especially if it's Muley. We need Alpine Ibex. I'll get behind that too. One of my favorite, absolute favorite species in Hunter Classic. When they announced Ibex for Quattro, I was hyped. And like, I I can't remember now. It's been so many years. But I think they said like four species of Ibex. And I was like, oh, well, Alpine Ibex will obviously be in there. I didn't know any better. <laughs> I don't think they have them in Spain. But I was just sure they were going to be one of them. So then when they weren't, I was kind of disappointed. And I still don't love the Ibex anyway. They're not the best models. But I almost held, held like a little bit of a grudge against Ibex because they weren't as cool as I wanted them to be. Blacktails with a rework? Certainly could use it. Doing an India map? That may, uh, may stir some controversy. I don't know. The Ibex Locidius, they are some bug-eyed freaks. Their horns are okay. Uh, the Bethides and the Grados are flipped. Grados should be bigger and Bethides should be smaller, but, you know, is what it is kind of deal. It's just, the models are rough. All right. Just a female, let's go back to the second lodge for our pies. Ibex look derpy IRL. They do, but I don't know. There's something about the way they did them in game that just isn't quite there. Are Bethesda's Ibex IRL so much bigger than the other ones? Horn wise, no. Grados should actually be bigger, I believe. Based on what I've seen. Speaking of Ibex, I think we can do much better than a couple of Ibex with some pies. I mean, like that. I guess that doesn't look terrible. I still don't like it. Think that in the future they should do a deal DLC in different years. I see what you mean. That could be cool. I like it. Little rare wall by accident. Piebald Rusa, albino cape, melanistic plains bison, piebald sandbar. Pretty darn cool. Just got my first great one. Congrats, man. That's awesome. What's up, Tux? I want to start off by saying I'm sorry you haven't been here. No worries, dude. Just got a new job three weeks ago, just working my butt off. But how's everything going? Going good. Uh, just shot a couple of pie balls today, a troll red deer to wrap up. And uh, actually, we are going to wrap up the stream. I'm going to try to run out and do a little hunting tonight. As I said, that one doe goes in heat, everything kicks off. Maybe tonight's the night we shall see. But uh, yeah, I think on that note, that is going to do it for this stream. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all the support. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video right back here in Call of the Wild doing some latent trophy cabin hunting and adding some pretty cool stuff to said trophy cabin.